my name is Dee Dee. I was an eighth grade English teacher. My blog is not about teaching English. My, life, my blog is about teaching the life lessons that I taught in my class. I had a captive audience. I have 175 kids every day that pass through my class. And I knew there were so many life lessons that I wanted to pass on. Why is it called my yellow raincoat? Well, if you see my ensemble over here, my yellow raincoat, my shiny black hat, my galoshes, sometimes in life we need something. We're going to go through a very dark time. So we need a coping mechanism. And I created a creative visualization. It's not really this coat right here. It's what I visualize in my mind that's going to help me through the dark times, the challenging times in life. And I pass this information on to my students so that they would have this coping mechanism. Sometimes we are going to go through a storm. It is going to thunder. It is going to pour. We are going to cry the whole way through because something so sad is happening in our life. We reach out to all the people that love us and care about us, our teachers, our counselors, our coaches, our parents, our friends, our friends' parents, people from our place of worship, our doctor. We reach out to everyone who loves us. We just want to be wrapped up in that yellow raincoat. It's a coping mechanism. And someday, as you trudge through that storm, you realize that the storm is going to pass. And you're going to smile again, and you'll be able to hang up your yellow raincoat and your shiny black hat and put those black galoshes away. So each um, day of my vlog, I'm going to each season, I'm going to present a different life lesson that I taught that I have so much feedback from students. I just want to read a little letter here from a student regarding the yellow raincoat. Miss Rand. I thought you might like this book. It's a collection of a wide variety of quotes about life, wisdom, love, luck, and many others. You've taught me so much, not just how to check my grammar and write an essay, but you showed me how to laugh. And you also taught me that it's okay, okay to cry sometimes. And when you have a problem, just put on your yellow raincoat. So much has happened in my life just this year alone. And some things completely changed me. Thank you so much for being here. So this morning, well, I say that every time I teach the lesson. So this morning, as I was getting for, ready for work, I realized I was trying to make so many decisions. Am I going to have oatmeal or eggs? Am I going to wear a dress or jeans? Am I going to um, go hiking or... Um, take Zumba after school. What do I have to do? Should I press that snooze alarm one more time? I, I bet some of you have had to make that decision like every morning. Some of them are little decisions. Some are big decisions. Some are casual decisions. Some are serious decisions. Some are so important. And yet we make these all day long. Some decisions will give you a gut punch because you realize the long-term effects of the decision that you're going to make. So today's lesson is called Split Second Decisions. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I was thinking about all the decisions I had to make today while I was getting ready for work. And there were so many that just came up just in a few minutes. Oatmeal or eggs? Jeans or a dress? Zumba or hiking? Press that snooze button one more time. Yeah, I see eyes rolling, nodding. What are some of the decisions you had to make? One by one, they came up with their decisions that they made as they thought back on the morning. And they're kind of creative. Well, which video game am I going to watch while I'm eating breakfast? Shower or not to shower? That one got giggles. Then I redirected their answers, focusing on some of the more important decisions. Should I talk to my teacher about grades? Should I tell my parents I want to quit football? Should I tell my BFF that there's someone in our group that's talking trash about her? Some of the decisions are mundane and some are no-brainers. Like taking drugs. You have learned about just to say no to drugs since you're in fourth grade. So if someone comes up to you and says you want to try drugs, 
No, you already know that decision. It's already decided for you. You might decide, like, should I put my homework in my backpack? Yeah, that would be a good thing. Pack my instrument for band. You already know those decisions. But other decisions are contemplated for a very long time. And some of them are even a little troublesome. Will my parents be upset if I quit? Will my BFF be angry with me and hurt? And what is my teacher going to say that I missed a few homework assignments? They got quiet and they paused and they, I was scanning the room and they knew that I wasn't done because I had already written on the whiteboard split second decisions and I hadn't gotten to that yet. Some of the decisions we make are based on a combination of knowledge and experience. Say for instance that if you were going to try drugs or alcohol, you were deciding, of course, you're going to say no because you have already said that. You have already planned that. You see enough of the results of that on TV, in movies. You hear about it from your parents. You see it from the kids at the high school next door. We already know those decisions. We know that drugs and alcohol do not mix with driving. You get on the road and you endanger your life and the lives of everyone else on the road. So I have a, a sad story that took place from a boy at the high school that didn't think about this. He was very drunk and he got in his car and he drove to the construction site over by the ice den. And for some reason, he put his fist through the window unbeknownst to anyone why he did that. He was able to get his phone out and get a hold of his friend and tell him to come and get him. The problem was, is that he was so drunk, he didn't know where he was. And so he bled to death. And we have a grieving family. Very sad death, very senseless death. My, cra my class looked very somber during this time. And there was like this silence, this heavy silence that just permeated the air because I wasn't done yet. There are some serious decisions that will arise that we never had any experience with. We didn't have a history with them. No one warned us about it. So we didn't know what to do when this decision came, this decision making came up. You have this much time to make the right decision. One of my students told me about her friend from the high school who was driving on the 101 freeway. And she was on the phone. I don't know if she was texting or talking, but she had the phone in her hand. And you know, your parents told her not, her parents told her not to have the phone. Driver's Ed told her not to have the phone. We've certainly seen enough advertising about not, and hearing the news about not having your phone out in the car when you're driving. She dropped her phone. She had two decisions to make. Wait till she gets off the freeway and is parked and then she could pick up her phone and resume whatever she was doing, texting or talking, or she could bend down to pick it up. She had this much time to decide. And she decided to bend down and pick up the phone. People behind her saw this whole thing happen. She rode the car four times and she died at the scene of the accident. More grieving families. It was a yellow raincoat kind of a day while I was discussing all of this. They had to go through tragic, tragic storms. The yellow raincoat does not erase the pain. It's just a coping mechanism for that time period in your life. All right, so... I'm going to present another situation that could take place that maybe you would participate in or you have participated in or you know someone who has participated in this decision making. You and your best friend, you decide you're going to have a wonderful weekend together. 
your parents are going to drive you to your friend's house, and from there, you're going to go, your friend's parents are going to drive you to the movies. And then afterwards, you can even hang out at Starbucks a little bit. This is going to be a fun night. So your parents drive you to your friend's parent to your friend's house. Their parents get in the car and drive you to the movies, and everything is going along great, except both of you lie to your parents. Because round this corner comes another person in a car, an older friend, who is now going to drive you to a party. And everything will be really cool if you can just get back to the Starbucks, say, within about three hours. You go to the party. Wow, what a great party. We are having so much fun. There's so much food and alcohol and dancing and everybody's having a great time. Well, it's time to leave so that you can get back there on time. But what you realize is that the driver is very drunk. The car, the engine has been started. You have this much time. Are you going to get in that car with the drunk driver, not knowing what is going to happen, knowing that you're risking your life and everyone else is on the road, or are you going to call your parents? And what is that going to mean? That's going to mean a lot of yelling, a huge lecture, and probably grounding. Maybe for life? You have this much time to decide. What is the right thing to do? I got real quiet during this time period. It's called wait time in teaching. And you just wait until you think the kids have had enough time to think about it. And who would be the first brave soul to raise their hand and say what they were thinking. One by one, we had this very robust discussion, hitting on everything from lying to parents, parents losing trust, alcohol and driving, making smart choices, and deserving the grounding, and other split-second decisions that they might have to make, stupid decisions, and choosing friends. I've often um, received communication from parents eager to share how our class discussions infiltrated family dinner talk. They would say things like, Miss Rand said this, or we discussed split second decisions today. What do you think? Since this topic was of utmost important, importance, I assigned a relatable written homework assignment with your parents. I want you to focus on split second decisions that might come up determine options that might be presented. The kids wrote just amazing examples. Try drugs or not, steal something from Target, cheat on a test or an assignment, tell your best friend's parents their child is doing something very dangerous. Letters from parents reaffirmed what happened in Rand's class did not stay in Rand's class. And that was a beautiful thing. So I would like to read this letter from a former student. Thank you so much for a great year. There is one thing that I need to let you know. Next year, when I am in high school, I won't remember the books we read or the language books we learned from. I will remember something else. I will remember what you told us about life and how to be able to choose what is right and what is wrong, about how some Choices you make, even in middle school, can affect your whole life. After school, I would go home and tell my mom about everything you told me. She would say, well, at least there's people at school teaching you. I just want to let you know that I will never smoke, drink, do drugs, or fall to peer pressure. I have way too many goals in my life to screw it up with something as stupid as drugs. Thank you so much for an amazing year. To complete this lesson, I needed to take it another step further and give the students self-talk. What can they say so that they won't have to make a decision, like the one with just say no to drugs because they already know the answer? One could be, don't have your cell phone out. It's just out. It's put away. When you are ready to drive, your cell phone is put away. You are not even tempted to answer it or pick it up. If you are going to a party, be the designated driver. Know that you are not going to drink so that you have the ability to drive safely. 
the kids came up with amazing choices again. I mean, one of them was don't lie to my parents. And then I'll never have to worry about having to face all these consequences and disappointing my parents and doing stupid things at the same time. That bond of trust is just going to grow and grow between you and your parents. Now, when I was a teenager, I faced this example myself. I had a group of friends and we were very close. And as we turned 16, things started to change. A lot of my friends started to drink and do drugs and get way too physical with boys, and I didn't want to do this. I just thought, this is not for me. But if I don't participate, and I don't hang out with these friends, I'm not going to have any friends. So I actually went to a therapist at my place of worship, and we worked through this whole issue. We talked about it and all the consequences from it, and my dilemma, and my decision was made. I was going to leave the group. It's clapped. They love these. They really get into these lessons. Um, one of the side um, bars to that lesson that I told them is, and by the way, did I tell you that I ended up graduating high school a year early and I started college the week I turned 17? Oh, boy, the big clap. And now you're here. Ta-da! Now, there's one more thing I must mention. That's very important. Maybe you have already made bad choices. Maybe you've already done some things that you think, if you look back now, are really stupid. You know what? It is not too late to change. You can start living your life making smart choices. It's a new day. And um, learn from your old mistakes. Ta-da! It's a new day. So, I just want to read one more letter. From a student, I am very thankful that you were my teacher this year. I have learned so many new things that will help me in my future. Not only have you helped me with my academic success, but you have helped me teach about many do's and don'ts. One example is to never use your phone in the car. I would have never even paid attention to that. Important topic. Not only have I paid attention to other people on the phone while they're driving, but I have also told my parents to not do it. Also, I will never do drugs or drink. Drugs lead to terrible things that are extremely threatening. I am involved in sports, volleyball and tennis. And I know if I want to get anywhere with a sports career and scholarship, I know I have to stay clean. Thank you so much for being a great teacher. You taught me so many valuable lessons and information. I know it will help me in my future. Do not ever think that the kids do not want to hear these lessons. They do. Thanks so much for tuning in.